F I G. Oh, I thought you said I'm fixed. Like, are you fixed? Like, fixed. I'm like, fixed? Fixed how? Oh, I would have what? to give you some. Thank you so much. Stop! Yeah. They're actually pretty good. I wish, it I wish I had them yesterday. I had a dinner party last right night. Right in your yard? Perfect. <laughs> My cheese. Yeah. I'd love to try some. Yes. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Some, like, Walmart bags. Thank you. Wow. I took some last year. I just eat them in bugs. Yeah, that's what. Well, I brought some for these ladies. I walked them and she just picked it up and just. They're not like really sweet, but they're really good for you. That's amazing. You can you can can make them sweet though. Yeah. I put honey on them. Oh my god. Oh, that's a good idea. The deer and the squirrels didn't devour them. Oh, they will. You got them first. Like we had a harvest early, like in early June. Yeah, you. And I didn't know that we'd have two, and then I looked, and there's like thousands of birds. Oh, I didn't know they did twice. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I might even bring some for next Sunday if we have more. That is. That's amazing. Did you plant the trees, or they were in your yard? Oh my gosh. I wonder how old the trees are that they're so fruitful. Huh. That's amazing. That's why I was making them. Really? They preserve it for the end. Yeah. I'm like, what are you going to do with all of them? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Probably dry them out. One other lady in it, she said she made a big cake with them. Oh, my goodness. Figgy pudding? Figgy pudding. I don't know how to do that either. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Miss Kimberly. I'm so sorry I can't be with you. It's <laughs> a teaser. Good morning, Discovery Church. Please rise and join us for our beginning song.
my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Welcome this morning to Discovery Church. We are taking a little deviation from our normal Sunday church service. Our fearless leader, Kimberly Brantley, is taking her youngest daughter and getting her moved into college. So we are having this morning a musical sermon. Um, so if you are visiting, this is not our normal format, but just enjoy and roll along with us as we guide you through a little special uh, Sunday morning gift. Um, a few general announcements. Uh, the Discovery Church care team is seeking new members. The care team is the caring arm of Discovery Church, and they are seeking about four to six members. If you're interested, please see Don Holloman. Don, if you could raise your hand for me. Um, see Don Holloman if you're interested and you feel called to the care team. And a few announcements about our mission projects for this month. Discovery Church is collecting donations for water for Tanzania. This is, um, Tanzania is um, an area that is in need of a fresh water source. The water in Tanzania is shared with animals and it's used for bathing, it's used for cleaning, and it's used for drinking. It's full of mud, bacteria, and parasites, which can cause severe illness and even can be fatal for those who are drinking uh, water that's unclean. This mission project will help build wells, build, excuse me, build wells closer to the villages, and any contributions from us can help make providing clean water a reality and in turn provide children with safe drinking water and the opportunity to get an education instead of spending time collecting water. Um, also, our other mission for this month, Discovery Church is continuing to collect money for the Discovery Church preschool by collecting items off of their supply wish list. Um, you can check the Discovery Church news bulletin for those desired items, or um, there's also a list, I believe, in our current bulletin and in the e-bulletin. And I do also want to extend a welcome to our Discovery Church family members who are watching from home. And at this time, if we could go ahead and please pass the peace.
we're going to mix things up just a little bit. The, uh, we're going to do the offering now. Don's ready. So before, before we do the offering, we're going to say a prayer leading before the offering. And then uh, I have a couple words to say about this lady right here <laughs> who volunteered the last minute. Um, but let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord God, as we gather our offerings, we do so with joyful hearts. We acknowledge your goodness and faithfulness in our lives, and we are reminded of your call to step out into the world and make a difference. Give us courage and wisdom as we engage with the world around us, sharing your love and truth with others. Bless these offerings that they may support missions and spread your word to those in need. Empower us to be your hands and feet in the world, shining your light wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So while they're doing their, their thing, the, uh, it's probably when Tuesday night, Pam Westfall called me and said, hey, we don't have a plan <laughs> for Sunday. Maybe Margie could do a sermon. I said, this is the first week of school for Margie. I can answer for her. No. <laughs> so we were, you know, just silent. What are we going to do? And I said, well, Wendy has a gift for this, and Wendy and I have been talking about this for probably two years, not very organized with talking about doing a, something where we would take a song, we would associate scripture to that song, or in this case, a group of songs, and then we would worship. We don't usually worship. We just lead singing. We don't lead worship. We lead singing, but this would be a way to lead worship where she would say some things about the scripture, and then we would sing the song. And so I said to Pam, I said, well, why don't you call her and ask her? Because <laughs> she'll probably say the same thing my wife will say, if I call her and ask her, no, but she won't do that if you call her. And so Wendy graciously said yes and is a rock star like always. And so I also wanted to add that the majority of Christians throughout history have gotten their theology that is, their ideas on God, not from books or lectures, nor from sermons, but rather from the songs that we sing and the prayers that we pray. And so today is no different that, you know, hopefully at the end of every Sunday, people go home and the things that come to mind in their prayers and their thoughts are in their heads are maybe the songs that we sing. Go ahead, Wendy. And usually one of the songs um, is stuck in my head the whole week. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to ask Trish and Jen to come up here for a second. They don't know I'm asking. Okay, great. But you don't have to speak or sing. Um I don't hear very well lately. <laughs> And so for me to do the prayers of the people, I won't be able to hear you. So my apologies. I'm going to have them walk around with the mic. Um, I have to turn it on. So that if you have something that you want to share, you can. Um, and I'm horrible with names. I know you all, but if you ask me what your name is right now, I won't know it. Um, so forgive me if I don't say your name as well. Um, so I would just like to say, do we have any praises that we want to share? Raise your hand and they'll bring you the mic. Again, I would like to praise God for taking care of my brother and healing him. He is on the road for a PET scan on the 30th and um, Game of knife radiation on the third so far. So after that, they will figure out where they're going with chemo or anything like that. So, but praise God that he is that much better already. Yeah. 
Anyone else? Praises? Hi, this might be a silly one, but um, my two girls each started playing sports for the first time, which was a, uh, it may not sound like much, but for my wife and I, it was a huge accomplishment. <laughs> Um, each time when they went to their first practice, they were crying, saying they hate sports, they don't want to do it. And when they came back, they're like, oh, that was fun. We, I'm looking forward to the next one. Okay. They're going to cry again when they have to go to the next yeah. practice, but I <laughs> suspect that they'll also have a good time. So thank you, God, that it finally happened. Uh, they're doing some sports. So thank you. Who else would like to share a praise? Any others? If not, we'll ask for prayers. Who needs prayer or wants to pray for something? Jan for start school. I tried to put this on the prayer list, but I, it didn't go out. So I want you all to be praying for Brooke Williams and her family. Um, she has not been able to attend church for several years now because she's been caring for her mother who just recently passed away. And she still has a father that she needs to care for. So we'll still be unable to come, but she faithfully watches every week so remember her in your prayers, and if you need her address, I, I have it if you want to send a card to her. And also be praying for Emily and Kimberly as they are embarking on a new adventure. They're unpacking as we speak at the University of, uh, what is it? Wilmington. Wilmington, USC. Wilmington thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would really like to have prayers for my brother as well because I know the importance of prayers and I know they work um, not only that I would like to do unspoken prayers for those that can't be here or aren't here and uh, just thank God for this church and for the, the people in it that step up when we need them to. Okay. One more. Uh, I'd like to have prayers for Michael Hodges. Please keep him in your hearts. Is he making improvements or is he kind of struggling? Or both? I ask God's grace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I want to ask God's grace and mercy as my wife and I travel to uh, New Orleans to meet some friends from all over the country on Wednesday through the following Tuesday. And I just ask for travel and grace and mercy. And this is royal, so that help you out there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Mike, and um, uh, you guys always do the travel uh, blessings. I think that's really cool. I'm actually traveling later today, going international. Uh, it's Brazil. It's a work trip. It's it's not super long, or but um, I'm nervous because uh, I've only I haven't really been to Brazil that much. So uh, some of those travel blessings, please. Any others? Um, Eric's mom, Peggy, as she recovers from her stroke. And us doing this on our own. <laughs> help, help me, Jesus. <laughs> okay, let's um, go to the Lord in prayer. 
Lord, we come to you now. We just thank you for the opportunity to be here and worship you today in your house. We glorify you for who you are and what you've done. And Lord, we specifically want to pray um, and praise you for the things that we mentioned before, for our praises. We pray for Lynn's brother who is healing, um, coming up to a PET scan and maybe facing radiation and chemo. But we praise you for the progress he's made so far and pray that you continue to do so. We pray for young ones who are just starting sports. Um, we know that joining a team can be scary and learning a new sport can be scary. Children have self-doubt. And we pray, God, that you would give them the confidence to move forward as they learn, and Lord, to just bless them with a great time as they play a game that should be fun um, and intermingle and make new friends. We praise you, Lord, for all the volunteers that we have in our church. Um, there are many. I don't know that there's anyone in the building that doesn't participate on some team or group or organization within the within the church and I just am thankful for the spirit of volunteerism that we have here and Lord when there are needs people do step up and we pray that people will do that even more we do thank you God so much for our church and our building and this community of believers we pray God that you would answer our prayers we know you hear us we pray for the college students, especially those first-time college students that are going there for the first time and settling in a dorm or an apartment and taking those first steps as a young adult. We pray that you would guide them um, in their choices, guide them in their studies, give them the confidence to stand up for what they believe in um, and not be moved by the temptations that are presented at college. We also pray for the teachers and the other students that are going to, not college, but elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, the teachers who prepare daily, give them the words to speak, um, give the students the ears to hear that we would all have a good and pleasant, safe school year. We pray for Brooke Williams and her family. Um, then the recent loss of her mother we also pray that you would give her strength as she cares for her father uh, and seems to be just a stronghold in their family. Give her strength and courage. We pray for James, Kimberly, and Emily and their family as they move her into UNC Wilmington. We pray that they have travel mercies. Um, we have many people who are traveling, traveling uh, to Louisiana, to Brazil, Lord, we just ask that you put a hedge of protection around them and keep them safe and bring them back to us next week. Continue to pray for Lynn's brother and his healing. We have some unspoken prayer requests. I'm sure we all have those, but you know them before we even ask. So we ask, Lord, that you hear them and intervene as it be your will. We do pray for those that are not here. We pray for those that are here. Um, we especially bring you um, Mike Hodges and um, Eric's mom, as they are both recovering from recent illnesses, Lord, we pray that their rehab and therapies will um, progress them to their old self. And Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us, the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll hear from Kimberly. Hey everybody, it's Miss Kimberly. I'm so sorry I can't be with you today, but I'm helping Emily move into her dorm at her school. We're really excited for her. So I have some items here. 
See if you can look at my items and figure out what they have in common. I'll make it a little bit easier. I'll take this one away. So now we have some wasp and hornet spray. We have a big knife. We have a, I call it a flamethrower. It's really a lighter. And we have an open flame. What do these things have in common? These are all things that you have been told not to touch. Not to touch. Shouldn't touch this one because you might accidentally spray yourself or somebody else. Shouldn't touch this one because it's super sharp, right? Look at those teeth. Shouldn't touch this one because you might light something on fire. And if you touch that one, it will burn you. So you've been warned never to touch any of these things, right? Well, what if I put my prayer shawl back in here? And you remember seeing this before. It's a commemorative version of the one that Jesus wore. And it has the zitzit, the tassels for prayer on it. And Jesus and his contemporaries would wear these whenever um, they were out in public. And they always wore them to temple when they were praying. And they used it to cover their head before God to show respect. So this is okay to touch. And the lady in our story today knew that. Listen to the story. Oh, I hadn't thought about the fact that I'm going to need two pairs of glasses. <laughs> One touch. People crowded around Jesus as he walked. They pushed this way and that way. They even bumped into Jesus. Some people just wanted to see what Jesus looked like. Some wanted to talk to him. Some wanted to listen to him. One woman wanted Jesus to make her well. She had been sick for 12 years. She had spent all her money going to see doctors. No one could make her better. She kept thinking, if I could only get to Jesus, if I could just touch his clothes. She pushed closer and closer. Finally, she was close enough. She reached out and touched his cloak. Right away, she felt better. She knew she was well. Jesus stopped walking. He turned around. Who touched me? He asked. All these people are crowding around you, Peter said. Many people touched you. But I felt some power go out of me, Jesus said. Then the woman came to Jesus. I touched you, she said, and you are well now because you believed, Jesus told her. Go in peace. It's always okay to touch Jesus. He wants us to touch him. He wants to heal us. He doesn't want us to be sick. He doesn't want us to be miserable. He wants us to bring everything to him. So anytime you want to reach out and touch Jesus, all you have to do is pray. Let's pray. Dear Jesus. Hey everybody, it's Miss Kimberly. I'm so sorry I can't be with you today, but I'm helping Emily. To another prayer, I promise. Um, Don, if you'll come and read our scripture. The scripture reading this morning is from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. It's from the New International Version. It's subtitled, The Prayer of Faith. Is any one of you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful 
and effect. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. And I will tell you that I am super excited and nervous at the same time. So I try to turn my nervousness into excitement. So I'm super excited <laughs> to be here today. Um, when um, Pam asked me to kind of take this and run with it, she didn't ask me in person. She sent me a text. I guess she was scared to ask, too, like Fred was. Uh, but normally I'm not too nervous to speak in front of people. But when I, I speak with something like this, I get a little nervous, so I'm going to claim Jesus to help me. But um, our sermon uh, in song is about prayer. How do I pray? How do I pray when I don't even know where to start? Many of you there, I'm sure, are super, super prayer warriors. I know many of you are, but some of us are not super prayer warriors, and um, sometimes we need a little guidance. So I always remember something I was taught as a young person, um, and it stayed with me forever. So that's something that I want to share with you guys today. Um, but some people will ask, do I have to pray? You know, because God already hears me. Do I have to pray? Well, yeah, you kind of do. Uh, Romans ten thirteen says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you have to pray first and ask God to come into your heart um, before he will even hear you. Um, so, yes, you have to pray. Um, and 1 Thessalonians five sixteen through 18 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So he wants us to be in a constant state of prayer with him, um, which can sometimes be hard if, you, if your prayer life is not really good. Um, you, you feel a bit of a separation there. Um, and so I wanted to share some tips with you guys today um, to improve your prayer life. And if all of you guys are super prayer warriors, then this sermon is just for me. Um, so I asked, do you have to pray? And I said, yes. And then, but do you really? Do you really have to pray? Matthew 6, chapter 8 says, your father knows what you need before you ask him. So do you have to? Yeah, you kind of do, but sometimes you don't have to. If you have an open heart um, that is willing and you're seeking the presence of God, sometimes just the silence is enough of a prayer because the Holy Spirit will help you. Romans 8, 26 through 27 says, The Spirit helps us in weakness when we do not know what to pray. The Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless sounds. So sometimes just asking and seeking the presence of God, you don't have to have the words. You just have to have the will and the want to be in the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit will intercede and pray for you. Now, there are a bunch of different kinds of prayers. Uh, this is where I ask for class participation. Uh, can somebody name a type of prayer? We just did one. The Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. That's one. What about Lynn? Intercessory, Intercessory prayer. Yep, we do that a lot. We did that when we did the prayers of the people. What about the Oh, go ahead. Praising. Praising, okay. What about the kids' prayers? See, finish this for me. Now I lay me down to sleep. Okay, and um, what about the, um, the children's grace or children's blessing? Again, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. Yes, so there, there are lots of different prayers that we learn and we memorize as children. Um, but as we grow in our faith, it needs to be a little deeper because sometimes you just memorize it and you say the words and you don't really mean it. You just say it. Because you're supposed to, you know, but you, you really ought to mean it. So then, as you get a little bit older, um, and you are a child of God, but you're literally a child, and you're asking about prayer, um, 
If Kimberly had not done her children's message, this was going to be my children's message, so I'll share it with you. The five-finger prayer. Does everybody know that one? The, nope, not that one. A different one, but that's another one. Yep. Uh, so everybody do this like you're going to pray. I'll put it close to you. So what finger is um, closest to your heart? Your thumb. Okay. So... Your thumb is closest to your heart, so you pray for the people that are closest to you, your friends, your family, um, you know, those, those that are close to you. What's this finger? It's your pointer finger, and it points you in the right direction. So you pray for people who guide you, um, who teach you, your teachers, your coaches, first responders, people who guide you in the right direction. Okay, what's the next finger? And it's the tallest, the middle finger. So tall, you pray for your leaders. You pray for the leaders in church, in your work, in business, um, and in government. What's the next finger? Your ring finger. Your ring finger is your weakest finger. If you don't believe it, ask a piano player. Um, but the ring finger is the weakest, so you pray for the weak the poor, the sick, the needy. And then what's this one? Your pinky. Is it big or small? It's the smallest. So that is what you pray for yourself. You are the least of these. So that's when you pray for yourself. So as a child growing up, if you needed some guidance on how to pray, this was a good thing. This was a good thing to help you remember to pray for various people um, and yourself. Losing my pla my place here. I brought some notes, but you know how notes are. There was um, another prayer we had mentioned. Um, Mike Hodges earlier, his daughter Joy um, used to talk to the kids about a flash prayer, and a flash prayer is just something you say real quick. So she taught that to the little ones. When they got to middle school, they weren't little anymore, and we changed it to like a a text prayer. So every time she would see an ambulance go by, she would do a flash prayer and just pray for that person that's in the ambulance and the people that were taking care of the person. Or if something really good was happening, she was like, oh, thank you, God, for that. That is an awesome thing. Thank you for what you've done. Just something real quick, um, a flash prayer or a text prayer. I like to give an example of prayer because children get it right most of the time. You know, they they do their little prayer, and then they're like, God bless Mommy, God bless Daddy, and God bless all of these people. And then they go off track something super random, but it's always really good. You know, it's always from their heart. Uh, and I like to share a story of our daughter, Casey, when she was little. Um, we used to tell them that, um, you know, lying was bad. Lying is not a good thing. And that... Every time you tell a lie, because Santa Claus is always watching, he knows when you're good, he knows when you're bad. Every time you lie, Santa Claus takes away one of your Christmas presents. So if you want to have a lot of Christmas presents at Christmas, you better not tell a lie. So that, that's what we taught them. Well, one day, Casey got in trouble. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember listening outside her door. And I, I remember her saying, Dear Jesus, please tell Santa Claus that I'm sorry and I won't ever do it again. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, kids get it right. Um, you know, they have a tender heart. And if you got them in the way that they're supposed to go, most of the time they get it right. Um, so those are a couple of different types of prayers. Um, and like I said, some of you are great prayer warriors, some of us are not. Some used to be, and maybe we're not anymore. Because sometimes your prayer life can get stagnant, um, where you feel like you're, all you're doing is praying for other people and maybe asking for a couple of things for yourself. But afterwards, you feel like you're just not getting much out of it. You know, like you're going through the motions. 
And I think oftentimes we forget that part of prayer is praise. There's a praise portion and a thanksgiving portion of prayer. And, and those are often the point the, that give us the most satisfaction uh, and the most joy. If your praise and thanksgiving tanks are low, then spend some time in the Psalms. Psalms will lift you up. And they're all songs, um, you know, and they promote an attitude of gratitude and praise. And they will lift you up. Um, it's actually been scientifically studied and proven that um, when you have an attitude of gratitude, that increases your endorphins and makes you feel better. Uh, it's almost nearly impossible to be depressed and truly grateful at the same time. And, that, you know, sometimes maybe you just hear, feel like God doesn't hear you. Um, perhaps you've been separated by God from sin um, and you haven't asked for forgiveness for a while or even attempted to do any better. Um, and so I, I want to talk about how you can pray and remember the different aspects of prayer that will make your prayer more meaningful. Um, and, you know, Kimberly last week did her hope prayer and she said preachers and teachers always use acronyms. So I am too. I'm not a preacher, but I have taught. Um, so if you, yep, yeah, that right there. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, interse intercession, and petition. If you remember those things, that will cover your prayers. Your deep prayers when you're doing your quiet time with God. These are the things that you can use. Um, and I always remember it as I am acting on a tip from a friend. So it's active. So just when you are thinking about how I'm going to pray, think about how you can act on a tip from a friend. The first one is the A for adoration, which means to adore, to praise, to glorify, to lift up. In 1 Chronicles 29 11, Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and majesty and splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Your Lord is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. And so... Now we're going to sing a song about adoration, a song of praise to God. It is called um, Sing of the Goodness of God by Bethel Music and is now made popular recently by C.C. Winans. And uh, if you know it, you can sing it, but you don't have to stand. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head down I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good Every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God 
goodness of God. I have lived in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. My life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I have lived in the goodness of God. So next in our acronym of ACTIP is the C. The C stands for Confession to profess our sins and ask forgiveness, or to repent and turn away from our evil ways. Isaiah 59.2 says, Your sins have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you that he will not hear. 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13 through 17. He that hides his sins shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and turns from them shall have mercy. So we need to confess so that God will hear our prayers and bless our lives. And now I ask you to stand and sing our next song, Um, That is a prayer of a confession that, Lord, I need you. It's by Matthew Mayer. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest without you. I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense Righteousness, oh God, how I need you. For sin runs deep, your grace is more. For grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am. in me Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need Just 
confessions. It purifies the heart. It deepens humility and maintains fellowship with God. So our next letter is T in our act tip. Um, T is for thanksgiving, um, to be grateful for what he's done, to praise him and be thankful. Uh, And it's good to name them individually, uh, the things that you are thankful for. Because remember, a heart of gratitude it's hard to be depressed when you're grateful. Um, so that is, is a way of helping to restore yourself uh, through your gratefulness to God. Psalms 106, 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourselves to prayer. Be watchful and thankful. Now we're going to sing a song called Gratitude. It's by Brandon Lake. If you know it, you can join us and you can remain seated. (coughs) All my words fall short Come on. 
on my soul Don't you get shy on me, lift up your soul Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, Next letter is I, I for intercession. Uh, when we pray for others on the behalf of others for things that they need, um, things that they want, um, God instructs us to pray for others. And it was in the scripture that Don read in James chapter 5, the last verse, um, the 16th verse says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And we see that in our church. We saw that with Lynn. The prayers of some righteous people were powerful and effective to heal her of her cancer. Amen. Um, 1 Timothy 2, chapter 1. Let all prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. Like in our little five-finger prayer. We pray for all people. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and Luke 6, 27 and 28 says, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. Sometimes prayer is the only thing you can do. Um, but prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We're going to sing a song for you now called In Jesus' Name by Katie Nicole. <coughs> I speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurting, in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you I pray for your healing that circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every, every promise, he is faithful to keep. I speak the name no great good ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's the God of possible. I pray for your healing 
circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. possible I pray for your healing circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, the restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come to life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So we sang a song about intercessory prayer, praying for others. And now we come to the last letter in the ACTIP acronym, the petition, the P. Um, petition is praying for yourself, for your wants, your needs, and your desires, your circumstances, all the things that you need. It is okay to ask God for those things, and he tells us to. Um, some people say, oh, don't pray for yourself. It's so greedy. It's selfish. It's not humble. Um, but you know what? God prayed. Jesus prayed for himself. If he prays for himself, then we should pray for ourselves. And he told us to. Um, and his prayer to himself during the garden, at the Garden of the Gethsemane, uh, the night before his crucifixion, Luke twenty two forty two 42 tells us that he asked the Father to remove this cup from me, but not my will, but thine be done. So if Jesus can pray for himself, certainly we're allowed to pray for ourselves as well. And he told us to on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. James 4, 2, you do not have because you do not ask. So, yes, God does expect, expect us to ask, even though he will provide for us all of our needs. Um, it also gives us a chance to ask why. It is okay to ask why. Um, you know, God is our Father, um, and we ask our Father's questions as we grow up. He is our Heavenly Father. It's okay to ask why. Um, and, and even Jesus did that as well when he said, Why, God, have you forsaken me when he was on the cross? So this next song, our next two songs, um, please stand and sing this one with us. It's called The Same God by Elevation Worship. And following that song, we will, you can be seated for Heaven Help Me by Zach Williams. Calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the oceans I need you now to do the same thing for me Oh God 
God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary Whose favor rests upon the lowly I know with you all things are possible I'm calling on the God of David who made a shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you now Oh rock, oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness You answered prayers back then And you will answer now You are the same God You are the same God you moved in power then, God moves in power now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You are a healer then, you are a healer now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You were a savior then, you are a savior now you are the same god you are the same god oh god my god i need you oh god my god i need you now how i need you now oh rock oh rock of ages I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. find the words when I can barely breathe falling on my knees heaven help me heaven help me I can feel you near and I can hear you speak falling on my knees heaven help me heaven help me help me help me I can't walk this road alone I can't do this on my own tell me tell me I just need to hear you say 
Everything will be okay When I don't understand When I don't think I can I know you have a plan So heaven help me Heaven help me Help me Help me Cause I can't walk this road alone I can't do this on my own Tell me Tell me I just need to hear you say Everything will be okay Help me believe it When I can't see it Help me to know it When I can't hold it Help me believe it When I can't see it Help me to know it When I can't hold it Help me Help me Cause I can't walk this road alone I can't do this on my own Tell me Tell me I just need to hear you say That everything will be okay I just need to hear you say Everything will be okay When I can find the words When I can barely breathe I'm falling on my knees Heaven help me Heaven help me So as we come to our close, I just ask that you remember as you try to rebuild or restore uh, or to strengthen your prayer life um, to practice. You only get better when you practice. So use the act tip, acting on a friend that gave you a tip. Use your, your flash prayers. Um, become a prayer partner. Find somebody that will pray for you and you pray for them and you can hold each other accountable. Go back to the basics if you have to. Read your scripture and start with your children's prayers um, and, and pray that the Lord will help us. So let us go to the Lord in prayer, and after that we'll sing our closing song and do our benediction, and I'm sorry that we've gone over time. Please pray with me as we use our ACTIP ac acronym. <clears throat> Our Father and our God, we come to you with praise, adoration, and thanksgiving. We honor you because you are worthy of all praise. We glorify your name and praise you for your mighty works and wonders. We come to you asking for forgiveness of our sins, for we all fall short of your glory. None of us live up to your expectations. We ask for forgiveness for our sins of commission, for the wrong things we have done, and for our sins of omission, for the things we should have done. God, cleanse us from all unrighteousness and renew a right spirit within us. Restore our relationship and bring us closer to you so that we may discern your will for us and receive your guidance. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our salvation. We thank you for all our many blessings for health and home and church and work and friends and family and even for trials and suffering. For we know that all things work together for good for those who serve you. And when we survive and thrive through the midst of troubles with a peace that passes all understanding, then all the glory will go to you. And now, Lord, we pray for all of us as a group and as individuals for the petitions we pr prayed earlier, our travel mercies, our healing, hope, restoration, guidance. Uh, we pray for our leaders, our country. We pray for our church, for growth and discernment, unity and support. Let us be there for one another and for this community. 
And Father, we ask that you help us with our prayer lives to commune more with you, to renew our faith and live boldly for you. May you bless us and keep us until we meet here again. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for the final song. What's your impossible, your I need a miracle? What's got you barely hanging by a single thread? What looks so hopeless now? What weighs down your heart with doubt? You beg for a breakthrough, but no sign of breakthrough yet. When you cry and you cry till your tears run dry The answers won't come and you don't know why You wonder if you can bow your head even one more time Don't stop praying Don't stop calling on Jesus' name Keep on pounding on heaven's door Let your knees wear out the floor Don't stop believing Cause mountains move with just a little faith and your father's heard every single word you're saying so don't stop praying it's close to the broken heart it saves those who are crushed in spirit the alpha and omega knows just how the story ends when you cry and you cry till your tears run dry the answers won't come and you don't know why you wonder if you can bow your head even one more time Oh, do it one more time Don't stop praying Don't stop calling on Jesus' name Keep on pounding on heaven's door Let your knees wear out the floor Don't stop believing Cause mountains move with just a little faith and your father's heard every single word you're saying So don't stop praying Don't stop praying for the prodigal Don't stop praying for a miracle Hallelujah Hallelujah and amen no, Don't stop praying that addiction ends Don't stop praying for deliverance Hallelujah, hallelujah and amen Oh, don't stop praying for the sickness heal Don't stop praying for his power reveal Hallelujah, hallelujah and amen no, don't stop praying for the kingdom come. Don't stop praying that His will be done. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. Don't stop praying. Don't stop calling on Jesus' name. Keep on pounding on heaven's door. Let your knees wear out the floor. Don't stop believing. These mountains move with just a little faith And your father's heard every single word you're saying So don't stop praying Don't stop praying in our benediction wherever you are God, God is sending, sending you wherever, wherever you are God, God has put you there, there. He, has he has a, a purpose, purpose in your being, being there Christ, Christ who dwells you has, has something he wants to do through you where, where you are, are. Believe, believe this and go in his grace and love and power, power. and all God's people say Amen, Amen. We're done <laughs> <laughs>